Hello everyone, this is Mike Japer from NEPA Weather Academy coming back to you with another weekly video. Uh, this video will just outline what happened this weekend, what we could, what could occur tonight and into tomorrow, as well as the near future for this week. I know we got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible for you guys so you guys can all understand this. Uh, we have just a lot going on in general. We had a storm that moved through yesterday and it continued into this morning as it changed over from snow to sleet to freezing rain now to just plain rain. But just taking a look at some of the totals that we had across the area um, yesterday, generally we had a accumulations of 2 to 4 inches across much of the region. The highest was 5.2 inches in Somerset, PA. But overall, looking across our area, generally 1 to 3 inches was mainly uh, what occurred with this system. Uh, even in my 2 to 4 range, we had multiple reports of 3.5 to 4 to even 5 inches in southern New York there. So overall, the snow kind of changed over a little bit more quickly than models showed, but it's important to remember that with systems like this and cutter lows that usually the 850 millibar temperatures usually take over faster than anticipated, and that's why we had a little bit of a change over faster than anticipated. But with that being said, it was definitely an icy mess out there yesterday and even into this morning in some spots. But we have another thing to deal with this week, which is, or I should say today and into tomorrow morning, is the wind threat. So again, snowfall totals ranging anywhere from one to four inches basically across much of the region. Uh, again, in southern and south central PA, where uh, some of those heavier bands of snow set up in the morning yesterday, not even, not even that great snowfall totals overall in general. We had again, near Altoona, near three inches, and again, just places north that receive less than an inch. So again, it kind of underperformed according to some models, but again, basically a one to four inch storm across the region. Now taking a look at our meso analysis here, I just like to look at this just to see what's really going on because it gives you real time data. And here's our central low pressure system right here as it's moving off to the north northeast. And you see a little bit of a secondary low forming here, but that's not the main story we have to worry about here. Spotty rain showers and even spotty snow showers across western PA will accompany the region as it just updated right now. And this is a strong low pressure system. You see that 968? That is really strong for this region. And what will that bring behind it? You can see that re those really tight pressure gradient, especially right out in central PA and northeastern PA. That'll give us winds of 40 to 50, even up to 60 mile an hour wind gusts tonight, or the, I should say this afternoon through tomorrow morning. So again, power outages are going to be likely with this system, uh, especially with these winds, especially as it moves through. And it'll continue today into tonight and even into tomorrow morning before we start to see a little bit of reduction in the winds tomorrow afternoon. But just taking a look at what we have going on in terms of warnings, I mentioned the high wind watches were in place yesterday. And now the, our whole area here is smothered in high wind warnings. So again, we're watching out for that wind. Be aware of power outages. Again, where some of that rain turned over to snow because of being uh, cold air vection on the left side of the low. We have those winter weather advisories and even winter storm warnings up across against Lake Erie here as well. So the wind's going to be a major story tonight and into tomorrow morning before it starts to reduce a little bit in the afternoon tomorrow. So power outages are likely, especially in the ridge top. So if the higher elevation you are, the higher of a chance you have to see those 60 mile an hour gusts and some spotty power outages. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the day today. And even we'll take a look at the HRRR model just to see what those winds are doing. So this is 21Z, so this is what here? Uh, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. today. But as we kind of go through, you can see those wind gusts really starting to take up, especially in the Laurel Highlands here, gusts of 66 miles an hour possible. Uh, again, this is just a model guess, but again, 60 mile an hour wind gusts, definitely not out of the question, especially in those ridge tops. And as we go through the night, or this evening into tonight, those winds kind of hold steady. And even into the morning tomorrow, so this is 7 a.m. tomorrow, you see wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour likely in the valleys, up to 50 to 60 mile an hour in the ridge tops. So that's going to be our story for tonight and into tomorrow before it begins to die out a little bit tomorrow evening. Uh, still pretty gusty for sure. But then as we head into Tuesday, they'll start to reduce even more, and Tuesday should be a little bit more of a pleasant day. However, we do have a very strong high-pressure system out in the Midwest that'll be filtering cold air in, as you can see here by our front analysis here from the Weather Prediction Center. 
Again, some snow squalls will be possible, especially tonight and into tomorrow morning, associated with that low pressure system as well, and even into the day Monday. But I really don't think they're going to really impact our area. It'll kind of be confined more to the lakes. But again, you can see that northwest flow over here is bringing in a lot of cold air, especially associated with this 1044 very strong high pressure system. And as we move throughout the week, it's going to keep basically in the same place, even into Wednesday as well. So basically the story is it's going to be cold this week. Starting tomorrow, we're going to have temperatures in the teens and low 20s for highs with lows in the single digits, which will feel like the negatives with the winds. So it's certainly going to be a cold a cooler end to February with temperatures below average. So just keep that in mind as you're going out to work in the morning. You might want to bundle up. It's not quite over yet. We're not in March yet, but we are getting there. So that's promising signs for sure. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is our Wednesday night and a Thursday system. Now, I know I've seen a lot of chatter about this, and I mentioned this in a post that there's a potential for big snowstorm. And yes, there is a big a potential for big snowstorm. However... I feel like this is not really going to work out in our favor too well. So what I actually did was I brought up the uh, ensembles from the GEFS and the EPS, which is the Euro, just to see where the center low pressures are going to be. And the GEFS has not wavered at all. You can see these numbers to the right of the screen here, 78, 91, 93, 96, uh, 1,000, 1,004, 999, I believe that is, down by the logo here of Pivotal. Uh, basically, it's an out-to-sea solution that the GEFS is showing. And even if we move to the EPS, which originally had a lot of lows, a lot of the central low pressures closer to the coast, which would have brought moderate to significant snow to parts of the state, has actually trended to an out-to-sea solution. And I'm going to explain why that is uh, in just a minute here. But you can see the central low pressures, they're kind of more correlated now together, which means that accuracy is improving and basically all these models are showing an out-to-sea solution with this system, a more suppressed solution. Again, I'll explain why in just a minute. But, so why is this the case? What's, what's really going to be happening? So we're going to look at the GEFS. This is the ensembles. Uh, basically, what's going to be happening with this system. So it's, here's your potent short wave here. This is actually going to be amplified, and it's, it has a little bit of a negatively tilted trough here, which means it will intensify as it works its way through the Midwest and to the East Coast. However, there's this potent little short wave here, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say potent. It's, we just have this short wave here, which is actually going to be weakening this, the Midwest ridge here which basically is going to suppress the system and send it southward out to sea. So it really won't be able to get itself going. It won't really be able to wrap up the coast Wednesday night and the Thursday. But, however, I will say this. I know you guys aren't, you know, I know a lot of you want the snow. I want a big snowstorm. Who doesn't want a big snowstorm? But everything is just not lining up for a big system right now. Um, the teleconnections are actually good. I'll explain why in just a minute for a big storm. But just this pattern... And the short wave here is actually going to deamplify this ridge out here, which is basically going to send this system to the south. And you could see, I mean, it looks pretty good on here, but again, it's not really going to be anything major. If we still can't rule out a light snowfall, there might be parts of PA that might see a few inches, especially in the southern port of the southern portion of the state. So we gotta watch out for that as time grows near. I will update that accordingly. But again, with that short wave weakening of this ridge out here uh, associated with our Arctic air that we're receiving this week, which will basically send this system flat and send it basically out towards the coast and out to sea. So more likely the case is going to be if you're in Virginia or the Carolinas or you know people in the Carolinas, this is basically probably going to be your storm, uh, especially the Virginia area, the Virginia coastline. That's where I'm really thinking this storm's really going to uh, show the biggest accumulations as we head throughout the week. So that basically wraps up that story. I know a lot of hype out there, but don't buy the hype. This is just the pattern set up here. It's weakening the ridge, and this is basically going to send this system right out to sea like this. So it's unfortunate we haven't had a real big storm yet this season. But again, I think a lot of us are starting to trend, okay, where's, where's spring at? We need spring. And guess what? I actually think spring is coming, which I will actually explain in just a minute here. So what I have here is the MJO, uh, Madden Julian Oscillation. I like to use this as just a sort of teleconnection just to show what kind of phase we're in and what kind of pattern we could be seeing. So right now, 
Today's the 16th. We're actually in the phase eight, which is actually the best phase to be in when it comes to wintry weather. And I mentioned in my last video that there's there was a window of opportunity for big snow, especially from the 15th through like the 22nd. But as you can see, as we progress through, so the 16th here, 18th here, all the way to the 20th where our storm might be, it's in a good zone for a big snow potential, but the pattern just is not going to work out. And again, as we head towards March, it can, the MJO kind of goes down into phase one and into phase two and eventually goes neutral in what we like to call the circle of death here. So basically, our window is actually closing. Uh, this was our chance for a big snowstorm. I don't think it's going to come into play, although it will be monitored. Again, light snowfall is still possible over parts of the region. But again, that's going to be a problem after we get through this system and the energy gets on land. But just looking even further at our teleconnections, I like to look at the PNA to just get an idea of where the troughs are going to set up, where the ridges are going to set up. And we're actually very favorable for a lot of precipitation. What's, what we have been experiencing for the past week or two, you can see a very strong positive PNA value here, uh, indicative of troughing in the east, which basically means plenty of short waves, plenty of low pressure systems out in the east which was actually helping to aid some of this precipitation that some of us still needed because we were on the drought monitor. So it was good to see that. But as we head towards March, you can see that drop off starting to go negative. Um, I really don't believe it's going to be a, an extreme below average situation when it comes to precip in March. However, I do believe things are going to start to flatten out. I think that temperatures are going to be more average, maybe even slightly above average as we head into March. However, it's still something to watch. We still got plenty of days left here. Things could change a little bit. But right now, it's heading in a direction that winter is, I wouldn't say over, but we're going to have a period of kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's more like a, just like a steady state where temperatures are more normal, precipitation is more normal, and we won't have this really big storm potential that where storms can just really wrap up the coast. And even another thing, I mentioned the NAO last week, the North Atlantic Oscillation, uh, in my last video, where we had a positive value here, which meant warmer in the east, which which, which why we had that southeast ridge, uh, where warmer temperatures were in the Carolinas and down through Florida. However, that has gone slightly negative, which means we have a little bit more of a cold stretch coming in. Uh, the eastern part of the United States is actually colder in this situation. But as you can see, as we head through through the rest of February and into March, that's actually going to go positive again. So again, I think we're going to be in for a pattern change. I think temperatures are actually going to rise slightly above normal and precipitation will be a little bit more around average for this time of year. So hopefully we can start to see some 40s and 50s within the next couple weeks as we head into March. And as spring nears, as I am very excited about, I've kind of had enough of these slop mess storms that we've had where we've had snow to freezing rain to sleet to rain, to wind, it's just a bunch of junk we really don't need at this point. And then as we look even further, I brought up the CPC just to show you what's going on here. Our six to 10 day outlook, whoops, let me fix that, there we go. Our six to 10 day outlook is showing below average temperatures across much of the east, as you can see here um, in the blue shaded regions. And the southeastern part actually has the highest chance of seeing below average temperatures near 70 to 80 percent throughout the six to ten day outlook which is valid february 21st through the 25th uh let me go back here if it'll let me that'd be great okay it doesn't like me okay there we go um again as we move towards the eight to 14 day outlook temperature is still slightly below normal february 23rd through march 1st which is actually expected with the pattern we're in However, I will, we will probably start to see these orange colors creep into our region to start March. Uh, that's just my thinking. Uh, there's still a lot that goes into this, a lot of teleconnections that still aren't set in stone. So there's still a lot to look forward to. And, and even as we move into a three to four week, which I really don't agree with the, with the CPC here, but I could see what they're kind of saying. They have the area outlined in below average temperatures for the first two weeks of March. But again, based on the pattern, if the pattern continues to look the way it is, I wouldn't be surprised to start to see some average to slightly above average temperatures move in as we get into March. And the last thing I wanted to bring in was the AO index or the Arctic oscillation. Uh, you can see a very negative drop off here. And this was just recently, this is associated with our PV split and that really strong Arctic high 
that we were experiencing or that we are going to be experiencing this week with temperatures in the low 20s and temperatures at night in the single digits to near zero. But again, here, here it is. As we're going through the next couple weeks to end February, that's actually going to dip to the positive phase. And it looks like that'll continue in the positive phase as we head into March, which basically means that the polar vortex, I believe, is going to be retreating. Most of that cold air is going to be retreating, which will open up probably some storm tracks, but probably a little too warm for any big snowstorm. So I th I'm starting to think that we might see some more rain events as we head into early March. But it's a good sign if you want to see warmer temperatures to see this AO index go positive. And it looks like even the spaghetti models here have 99.9% .9 of the spread in the positive phase. So again, it's just a lot going into this, a lot of things to look at. We have wind tonight and into tomorrow morning before we see a lot of below average temperatures for most of the week with temperatures in the 20s and low temperatures in the single digits to near zero with wind chills in the negatives with some of these stronger winds associated with the strong, with this strong high pressure system as well as the low pressure system that is moving off to the northeast. And again, Thursday, I just mentioned, again, I'll explain it in layman's terms. I don't believe the significant winter storm is going to be happening because of that little trough out in the west that's going to flatten the midwest ridge and basically deamplify it which just means weaken it and basically it's going to send this system out to sea however light snowfall accumulations especially in parts in parts of the southern part of the state are certainly possible and i'll be keeping an eye on that and updating you all throughout the week but however teleconnections are lining up for a warmer start to march and even a more steady state pattern as i mentioned where precipitation is near normal maybe slightly above where more rain systems might be able to get in, which some of us still need because of the drought conditions present from back in October and November. So thank you all so much for joining into this video. I know this was a lot. Uh, I'll have updates throughout the week on everything. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you guys soon.